Hi everybody, my name is Caroline. I'm a lecturer in physics here in the UK. To kick off the week, I thought I would open with one of my more memorable science experiments. I was a first year PhD student. I was very excited to be joining my new research group. Um, and one of the first things I was off to do was to go to France to collect some experimental data. So I was going to work on the French synchrotron. Um, if you don't know what a synchrotron is, basically it whizz electrons around at high speed and by wiggling them it generates x-rays and then those x-rays we can use to fire into materials and explore their properties. Um, so that's about, a bit about the science, but I was super excited to get to go. So when you're at the synchrotron, you do measurements throughout the day and you also do measurements throughout the night. Um, as long as the beam is on, so as long as we're generating x-rays, we're still collecting data. Um, also, the x-rays that we use are super bright. So, you know, they're much, much more powerful than your dental x-rays. These x-rays can do some serious damage. It was a fairly full-on first experiment for a PhD student. I had a great supervisor, I was travelling with two really good postdocs, I had a really good setup, I had very experienced colleagues around me, um, I knew what I was doing with these x-rays, I was having excellent tuition. Um, so yes, although the x-rays are dangerous, the synchrotron is very well prepared, um, it's very well organised and actually, you know, the risk of anything going wrong is completely minimised, so I felt very safe. However, this is still the story of my most memorable, worst experience on, a, on an experiment. Um, and it actually didn't happen at the synchrotron. So we went out for dinner one evening and I think it was like a French pizzeria place. And it was in the middle of this lovely cute kind of square in the middle of town. And I went with my supervisor and with the postdoc who was with us at the time. And we had our pizzas. And it was a very pleasant evening. And then we went to leave and it was quite dark. And as we were walking across the courtyard, I turned around to give my supervisor, you know, some money for the meal. So I was trying to be a very diligent first year PhD student. I was trying to keep track of my budget and my expenses. I knew I was going to do a travel claim when I got back. Uh, and so I wanted to pay my share of the meal back to my supervisor to keep all of our accounts squeaky clean. That's when the problem happened. So as I turned around to give my supervisor my share for the dinner that evening, I didn't see that there was a low level chain lying across the pavement. Um, I think it was designed to section off an area. Um, I don't know if it's between pedestrian zones or pedestrian and car zones. I still don't really know, to be honest. All I remember was tripping up, but because I was looking backwards, as I tripped up, I just about got my head round to face forward as I then crashed forward, hit the pavement and split open my chin. Um, my supervisor and postdoc were amazing and they were like, you're fine, you know, your teeth look fine, things are going to be okay, we'll get you sorted out. Um, and I can remember feeling the back of my teeth not being attached to my tooth anymore. And I can remember feeling bits of like tooth enamel coming down onto my tongue and thinking this is not a good situation. Uh, so yeah, we went back into the restaurant and I nipped into the bathroom to have a look at how bad the situation was. And I'm a pretty squeamish person and seeing my chin cut open and seeing all the kind of the, the flesh inside, it, was, it wasn't good. I didn't feel particularly good about the situation. Um, it got a little bit worse because then the lovely lady who owned the restaurant came out and asked if I'd been attacked. Um, and I had to try to explain in French that I hadn't been attacked. I'd just tripped over. Um, we bundled ourselves into a car. Um, we got driven by a taxi company to the local hospital. I remember going in and they put like this sheet over my face. So I couldn't see what was going on. And then um, a young doctor started to stitch my chin back up. Um, they let the postdoc in to kind of make sure I was doing okay. But then they thought the postdoc and I were married. When they realized that we weren't married, they threw the postdoc back out again. So I'm back in the room by myself. Um, he was a really nice doctor. But I later discovered it was a training hospital, so he put the stitches in quite tight. Um, and actually, there might still be a little stitch there somewhere waiting to peek out in my, my old age. But what I'm most proud of is that after I'd got stitched up, so I've got a really, you know, 
messy, horrible chin. Um, I've bled all over my top, all over my scarf. Um, we went back to the synchrotron and obviously my supervisor and postdoc are like, just rest, just relax. And I was determined to go and see our data. So actually I went back onto the synchrotron, back into the experiment with my now stitched up chin and we collected the rest of our data. Uh, the next day I went to the French hospital. Um, that's where the lovely dentist took the back of my two teeth out properly that had fallen out. Um, they patched me up, put me on a plane back to the UK and then two weeks later I had to have some work done to build up the back of the two teeth that I'd lost. Quite an expensive dental bill, you know, and um, luckily it was all covered by insurance but it was, yeah, a four-figure dental bill um, and I couldn't eat properly for a few weeks after that. But in good news, the data that we got from that experiment was great. It set me on the path for a really good three-year PhD. I felt really sorry for my supervisor, really sorry for the postdoc. There was nothing they could have done. It was just one of those things, just one of those accidents, walking along the street, happened not to see a low-lying chain, tripped over, nothing anybody could have done to, to prevent that. Um, it was just one of those things that happened. So when people ask me, is experimental work dangerous? Actually, doing the experiment isn't particularly dangerous because the places we work are so well controlled, the facilities are so organised, there's so many good safety procedures. Actually, it's going out for dinner that I found to be one of the most dangerous moments of doing my PhD. But it definitely made it one of my most memorable experiments that I've ever taken part in. So yeah, I hope that little, little insight into life as a PhD student um, made you smile. Most PhD students, this will not happen to you, don't worry. Um, although I do have other stories about centipedes in Japan and other bits and pieces that happened during my PhD journey. So as this channel continues, I will occasionally pop up with a video about something that happened in my past. But I hope things are going well. I hope you're having a good week. Um, and I'll be back on Thursday with some more university related content. So if you like the video, like and subscribe. As I said, I'm Caroline, I'm a university lecturer and I hope to see you here on Thursday. Stay safe and I'll see you soon. Bye.